Siri is the voice of the iPhone. At first you only had a female voice, but now you have a number of different options. So depending on your preferences, Siri can be male or female. Personally, I prefer a female voice, so I can't help but think of Siri as a female. Siri can be very helpful. She can provide turn-by-turn -turn directions as you travel. She can compose text for you as you talk into your phone. She can even be chatty, although she doesn't like to talk about HAL 9000 very much, that famous computer in 2001 A Space Odyssey. In addition to the helpful features Siri has, there are any number of wonderfully useless features. If you're friends with Siri like I am, you can ask her or him, what planes are above me? It's not even a special app, just part of Siri, and she'll show you what planes are flying nearby, how high they are, and what angle they're traveling at. I can only assume her information is correct. So standing here in my house with technology available to anyone and everyone out there, I can know the location of planes near me. If that's the case, doesn't it make, all, make it all the more incredible, unbelievable, and overwhelming The Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 could simply disappear? The plane took off on March 8th, and since then the best we have heard is there is some debris that might be part of the plane somewhere. Everything else is pure speculation. How can this happen? How can 239 people simply disappear? How can a massive airplane vanish? How is it that planes fly around the world and we do not know where they are every second of the time? For 130 bucks and $15 a month, you can get a, a GPS device to put on your teenage driver's car. Every time they exceed the speed limit, you can get a text along with a regular email report telling you where they went, when they went there, how fast they drove from place to place. We can do all this and we can still lose a plane? How can it happen? This is a question asked time and again in this world. Every time someone stands over the valley littered with dry bones, they ask the question, how can this happen? And just to be clear, I'm understanding the valley of dry bones as a metaphor for loss in this life, for pain in this life, for broken and ended relationships, lost jobs, failing bodies, sickness, disease, and death. These are the dry bones of this life, and no one lives long without surveying those bleached white bones scattered across the valley floor. Here's the catch. Even when we know the answer to how, even when the answer is clear and easy to understand, even when we know who's responsible or who, who was irresponsible, and the details are clear, and the reality is there for us to face, answering that how question only leads to another question. Why? Why did this happen? Why is this going on in my life? Why is this happening in the world? Why is this the new reality I must accept? Notice in the story of the raising of Lazarus, his sisters Mary and Martha don't seem to care about the how question. Lazarus got sick and died. That's reality. They don't question how it came to pass. All they care about is why. Why did this happen? And even more, they ask the question on so many people's lips. Why did Jesus allow this to happen? Underneath all our whys is that haunting question. Why, Jesus? Why, God? Why do you allow this suffering, this sorrow, this grief? Why do you allow it all to go on? The hard truth of this world is things rarely work to our schedules and according to our desires. The world runs on a different clock, and too many days in this life it seems as if Jesus rolls into town a couple days after we wish he could have been there. But Jesus doesn't shy away from our pain and sorrow and grief. In fact, this day we see Jesus entering into the pain and sorrow and sitting with Mary and Martha and weeping with them. Jesus wept. One of the shortest verses in all of Scripture, but packed so full of power, and grace, and hope. In the midst of death, Jesus comes and stands with us, weeping in sorrow and in pain, just like us. This is the story. This story is about more than death. It's about life coming out of death as well. God calling the bones to life and breathing life into them. Jesus calling, Lazarus, come out. These words are spoken to us as well. Come out from the darkness and death of your life. Come out from the shame and fear, from brokenness and pain, from your sorrow and regrets. Come out into the light of Jesus. Hear the words of grace and forgiveness, mercy and compassion. Sometimes in this life we can find out how things happened. We can trace back, analyze the evidence, come to a conclusion. The why question is harder. This is not a question you answer with facts and figures. You answer why with your life, living through each day, wrestling with the mystery. But there's one more question we need to ask. What now? What do we do now that Jesus has entered into this world and into our lives? What do we do now that Jesus has sat next to us weeping? What do we do now that Jesus has called us out of our places of death into the light of his life? Like the people there that day, the day Lazarus came out of the tomb, we too are sent to unbind them and free those bound. 
Some days it looks like tutoring at-risk kids so they might be freed to learn and grow. Some days it looks like swinging a hammer or a paintbrush and helping build a house so people have safe and affordable homes. Some days it looks like cooking a meal for people who are struggling to get their lives back together so they can have a healthy dinner. Some days it looks like forgiving your parent or child or spouse or coworker or employee or boss. Every day it looks like following the example of Jesus, that grace, forgiveness, and mercy might be the hallmarks of your time on this good earth. Sometimes you find out how tragedies or difficulties come into your life. Sometimes not. We still want to know why. Why did this happen? Where is Jesus in the midst? Trusting in the one who weeps with us, we live out that answer to what? What now? What next? What do we do? We answer that with our lives, living out the promise of the one who calls us all from death to the freedom of life.